nice operations. So when setting up the truck, prior to actually deploying the outriggers, both the driver operator and the roof firefighter, which the roof firefighter has been working on the, the curb side of the apparatus, needs to look underneath the apparatus and identify any hazards that may have an effect on the actual setup of the truck. So one of the things you need to think about whenever you set up the truck, ultimately you're going to be placing minimum of four outriggers. Um, truck 5-2 uses six outriggers and Quint 5 uses two outriggers. Okay, so it's ultimately design of the apparatus. Either way, whenever you start setting up the truck and you start thinking about where am I going to place the outriggers at, you need to identify any hazards that are located on the roadway. In the upper right hand corner here, you see there's a picture of a manhole. Just think about how a manhole is designed. Manholes are only designed as a, a really an opening in the ground, and they're designed in a way that an apparatus or a vehicle is only going to drive over those, but it's not designed for a, you know, an aero apparatus to be placed on top of that or have an outrigger placed um, directly on top of that manhole lid to then support the, the ultimate weight of the apparatus. So we should not be setting up apparatus, or you know, in, in theory, we should not be setting the outriggers on top of any type of manhole or other structure on the roadway that does not can support the weight of the apparatus. So in the lower right hand corner, you'll see a storm drain. Again, think about the way that storm drain is designed. It's only a, a temporary fixture. Okay, it creates an opening in the, in the ground um, or where the water is going to flow through, but truly it's not designed to support the weight of the apparatus. Also look at the curbing. Okay, if you look at or if you understand how curbing is made, it's not going to be as supportive as the actual roadway. So prior to setting up the truck or deploying the outriggers, the roof firefighter on the curb side of the apparatus needs to let the driver operator know is there anything that's going to be a hazard. The truck may need moved in you know, maybe a forward a foot or two or, or backed up a foot or two just to make sure that those outriggers are deployed in the proper positions. Now, when the apparatus arrives on the scene, now this goes a lot on the driver operator as far as their positioning, but the apparatus or the aero device should be able to reach at least two sides of the building. Generally, we're going to place the apparatus on the alpha side of the building or the front of the building so that they can at least maybe access the front of the building and one of the two sides. Or possibly, depending on the, the layout, the apparatus can be placed on one of the corners. So if I place the truck in, let's say, the Alpha Bravo corner or the Delta Charlie corner or the Delta Alpha corner, if I place the truck on the corner, then that's going to give me uh, the best uh, scrub area to either the front of the building or the side of the building or hit two sides and the roof at the same time. You'll see that we have a, a little bullet point here about short jacking. Short jacking for the apparatus is whenever you set the truck up, and not all outriggers are fully extended. Okay, so with that, let's say we're going to set the truck up. We're in a tight alleyway. We're on the driver's side. Outriggers can be fully extended, and the passenger side maybe only go out um, half their distance. The way the apparatus is designed, that's generally it's only going to affect um, the operation slightly. The arrow can still be placed in service. Now, once the arrow is placed in service, when it's short jacked. The only limitation you're truly going to have is you can only work off the side of the apparatus that has a full extension on the outriggers. If you work off the side that does not have a full extension, your the length of, of operation may be adjusted, um, the height may be adjusted some. And for truck 5-1, this is going to be done um, with electronics of the system, electronics of the apparatus. On truck 5-2, the aerial scope, you need to remember that those devices are not present on truck 5.2 the same as they are on truck 5.1. So short jacking is something that really should not be done on truck 5.2. The same with Quint 5. Okay, Quint 5 has some electronics involved in it. That if you don't get both of the outriggers out the entire way, there is some safeties built into it. But even at that, you should not be short jacking the apparatus and going in service unless there's absolutely a dire need for that piece of equipment to be placed in service. Whenever you work with the aero device, okay, so let's say we, we already had the device set up, the outriggers are out, and now we're either working as the person on the turntable or the person up in the bucket. 
we need to start thinking about obstructions we need to deal with. If you look on the, the upper right picture, the operator or the, the, the operator that's in the bucket, think about the things they're going to need to deal with, the, you know, what they've had to overcome to get the apparatus into that position. You can see all the trees, tree limbs, um, maybe some uh, electric service to the house that they're going to need to deal with. Also, even don't forget about the cab of the apparatus. Okay, so it is possible that you could bump into or crush the cab of the truck, okay, if you're not paying attention as either the bucket operator or the turntable operator. Look at the picture on the lower right corner. Okay, that was from the fire in Belfont. You can see the position of the old truck 5-1, the Sudfin. I believe it's truck 5-1. And just think about or look at all the different obstructions that that operator have to deal with. Now, I understand that maybe some of those electric lines you see in this picture are not you know, real close to the apparatus, but ultimately you got to think about what's going to affect my apparatus or what's going to affect my boom when I place it in service. All right? So you really need to be looking in all directions. We need to think about weather conditions. Okay, um, you know, a nice warm sunny day, you know, as we have here in, in the summertime, there's really not much of an issue as far as the apparatus maybe moving around on top of the pads. Now, if we take truck 5-1, truck 5-2, or the Quint, and we set it up, you know, let's say on a, a snowy, icy morning, there is a potential that ice may build up on the outrigger plates, and the apparatus could slide a little bit. Okay, so we need to think about the, the buildup of ice and snow. Um, this could be on the outrigger plates outrigger pads, um, outrigger plates, depending on what you refer to them as. Also, be cautious about the buildup of ice and snow on the boom itself. Okay, so if you take the, the boom of truck 5-2, there in the upper right hand corner, and you add the water to it, and the water starts to freeze, just imagine the amount of weight that you're adding to the apparatus. Okay. One of the other weather conditions is not listed on here would be the effects of wind on the apparatus. Okay. And I'll show you a little bit later on, um, where you can look on the, the the information plate on truck 5-1 and the, the ratings of the apparatus or the ratings of the boom do change once you get over that 50 miles per hour um, wind rating. Okay, that's going to start reducing um, the working loads of the apparatus. Also be cautious of electrical hazards. Try to stay at least at minimum six feet away from all um, electrical hazards, you know, overhead electrical lines or, or any other type of electrical hazards you may need to deal with. Um, all I'm saying is, you see here, the a minimum of six feet. If you can go ten feet, that's even better. Okay, but please, as the operator of the apparatus, whether you're at the turntable or you're in the bucket, you really need to think about, you know, the area around me. Okay, whether it's the area around the boom, whether it's the area around the bucket, whether it's the tip of the aerial, or even my relationship to the actual apparatus. Okay, there's a there's a few different you know YouTube videos out there. I can find you some pictures. Um, I know of, I think Riverdale, um, in the state of Maryland, they set their truck up on, uh, I think it was a grassy area, maybe between the curb and the sidewalk. Okay, they're working off that side of the apparatus, even though they thought they had it set up. Um, working at 95 feet off the right side of the apparatus, the apparatus actually tipped, and it drove that outrigger down into the soil. Okay, so we really need to be cautious of how and where you set the truck up. So, communications is important for aerial operations. Okay, so the aerial driver operator, okay, or the chauffeur or the driver, is going to take care of the street side of the apparatus. The firefighter, or generally the roof firefighter, is going to be in charge of or take care of the curb side of the apparatus. Okay, so that curbside roof firefighter, whenever you get off the apparatus, you need to look around, you need to identify any of the hazards. The other job that's going to be placed upon you is throwing the outrigger pads, making sure that the outriggers land on those pads, and then you're going to be responsible for pinning that side of the apparatus. Now, truck 5-2, the aeroscope, is the only apparatus we have that you need to manually pin the outriggers in place. Truck 5-1, the downtown Pierce, and Quint 5 at the College Station. Those two do not require a manual pinning of the uh, outriggers. Okay, so once they're set, they're good to go. Okay. So ultimately, the driver operator is responsible for the truck. 
I will talk a little bit about some switches in place, mainly on the turntable, that that driver operator, once that boom is removed from the turntable, or actually removed from its um, stowed position, wherever it gets moved to, okay, there needs to be a driver operator standing on the turntable overseeing the operations of the bucket. Okay, so if you get into a crazy position, maybe something is questionable, that driver operator has controls that they can override what you're doing in the bucket and re-manipulate your movie to a different area. Kind of pull you out of that unsafe area. Okay. So again, with bucket safety, I already talked about this a little bit. Make sure that you're aware of what's going on around you. Okay, you need to be looking above you, below you, beside you, behind you. It is very possible that you get tunnel vision whenever you're working with the aero device and you forget about where the rest of the boom is at behind you. Okay. There have been cases where somebody's trying to work around the corner of the building, even though their bucket is clear at the end of the, the aero device, they were you know, still kind of messed up a little bit and caught the, the boom on the corner of the building. Okay. So as the operator of the aero device, you need to pay attention to what's going on around you. Now, this is a two-fold thing. If you're working on one of the two trucks, truck 5.1 or truck 5.2, generally, the roof firefighter is going to be operating the bucket. Now, you're going to have the OV firefighter or another person with you. So, ultimately, the two of you should be working together okay, to keep an eye, to, to pay attention to where the apparatus is at, or where that, that bucket is, and make sure you're not touching up against anything. Right. So many times there are multiple maneuvers need to be taken care of at the same time. Okay, when you first start out working with the truck, you may only do a operation where you raise and lower, or you you raise and then you extend, or you lower and you retract. All three of the apparatus. Okay, so everybody, you know, if you have two hands and ten fingers, yes, it is possible to do three different maneuvers at the same time. You can swing left while you extend and while you raise. I have no problem with you doing multiple operations like that as long as you're out in the clear space. When you get closer to a building or closer to an obstruction, then you need to slow things down a little bit and just work on maybe only extending or only retracting or, or only moving to the right you know, just a little bit, not try to do too many things at the same time. When approaching victims, okay, so you need to approach victims if they are conscious, you need to either approach straight onto them or approach from above. You do not want to approach a conscious victim from below. Some people may ask, you know, why would you not want to bring the bucket up underneath somebody? The issue is, think about back to your Fire One training. If somebody sees you throw a ladder to the window and they feel like they can get themselves out of the building, there is a good chance they're going to get themselves out of the building before you make it up to them. So, here's our, our thing with aerial operations. If you come up from below somebody, trying to make a rescue, if they see you coming, if the building's on fire, if it's pushing smoke, heat, or fire, there's a good chance they're going to jump out of the window and jump into the bucket. Okay, so you think about it. If you take a, a 200 pound or 150 pound person, have them jump out of a window, land in your bucket, you're placing a few tons of force on that aerial device. And it's really, it's not designed to take that type of a shock load. Now, if you're working on Quint 5, the straight aerial device, okay, again with that one, you want to place the window, or place the, excuse me, place the tip of the arrow at the window sill. Okay, again, if you're coming down, if you're coming into somebody that is conscious, again, come down from the top, don't come up from below them. Right, we also need, as you can see here on the, the slide presentation, be cautious of combative victims. You know, much like we, you know, we teach you in the Fire One program about bringing an unconscious or conscious victim down a, a ladder, that unconscious or that conscious victim can do a lot of damage to you. So if you're working in the bucket or if you are working on the aero device, you must be attached to that device with the safety belt 100% of the time. Okay? The only time you're not going to be attached to the aero device is if you are ascending or descending quint 5. Once you get to the end of the aerial, let's say you're going to do an operation where you're going to do a horizontal or a vertical roof cut, at that point you want to make sure that you are attached to the end of the aerial device before you start your operation. 
Okay, so take away from that. The only time you're not going to be attached to the aero device with a safety belt is when you're actually climbing the ladder. Yeah. Truck 5 One's a 2016 Pierce. has a 95 foot boom. This is also referred to as a ladder tower. So the reason that we refer to this truck as a ladder tower is the ladder portion of it that's connected to the bucket is climbable. Okay, so you could actually set the truck up, then climb from the turntable up the ladder and then get into the bucket. There's between this and truck 5-2. Truck 5-2 is referred to as a tower ladder where truly on truck 5-2 the bucket is in place. You know, operate the bucket or get in the bucket to start with. And the ladder on top of the boom is only there as an escape ladder. Okay, so truck 5-1 is going to be referred to as a ladder tower. All right, so truck 5-1. The boom is 25 and a half feet retracted. Okay, so as it sits downstairs or as it sits in the firehouse, the retracted length is 25 feet 6 inches. The outrigger spread, which is kind of different on each of the apparatus we have at max, okay, or at the maximum um, width of the apparatus, is going to be 17 feet 3 inches. The outriggers, they extend from the side of the apparatus a maximum of 4 feet 6 inches. So the bucket on truck 5-1, right, so we have a thousand pound capacity, that's whatever the, there's the waterway is dry, there's no water um, up to the bucket. Once the waterway is charged, then the capacity of the bucket reduces to 500 pounds. Um, when it's flowing water, the maximum you're going to get out of it is 2,000 gallons per minute. So the setup of the truck 5-1, alright, so the picture you see here on the right side is going to be the controls up in the cab. Um, on those controls, you'll see both a aerial master and an aerial PTO switch. Once you push the button in, you're going to see them um, illuminate. Okay, so the first one you want to push is going to be the aerial master, which turns on the electric system or the electric to the outriggers and to the boom. And then the second button you want to push is going to be the aer aerial PTO, which is going to turn on the PTO system for the aerial. When you get out of the cab, so the first thing you want to do now is going to put a set of wheel chocks um, at the front of the vehicle. So you'll see that there's a wheel chock in front of the front tire, and there's also a wheel chock behind the front tire. A key point about placing wheel chocks is you do not want those wheel chocks tight against the tire. If there is any movement and you have the wheel chocks tight against the tire, then that wheel chock will ultimately become locked in place. So you want maybe a half inch or an inch gap between the wheel chalk and the tire uh, whenever you place those wheel chocks in place. Next point, so as you make your way back to the apparatus, you want to set the outrigger pads in place. Now generally, um, you know, uh, arm width, okay, or the, your arm span may be enough to get you pretty close to where those outrigger pads need to be. Um, back in the first slide, I think we said that those Outriggers extend four to half um, to five feet from the side of the apparatus. So if you stand there and put, you know, kind of spread your arms out, um, fingers touching the apparatus, the other side of your, your, your other arm, should give a good, pretty good indication of where the outrigger pads need to be placed. From that point, okay, you go to the back of the apparatus, and you will see um, underneath the ladder tunnel, you'll see a little panel here. We open the panel up. On the left side of that panel is the control box, and to the right side is going to be a switch panel. In the lower right corner, you see a switch that has a little box around it here in, in the slide set, and that's going to be the stabilizer power switch. So you want to um, manipulate that switch or push it up, and then you should see a green light come on. That's going to be powering or putting power to the outer control box. Looking at the outer control box, so you'll see up in the left corner, okay, the top left corner, that's going to be for the front left outrigger. The lower left corner is going to be the right rear, or the left, excuse me, the left rear outrigger. On the right side, the upper right corner of the box or in the switch there is going to be the front right outrigger. And the lower right or the, the lower corner will be the rear right outrigger of the apparatus. Some other buttons you see on here is going to be a level assist and the emergency power unit for the stabilizers. Okay, as far as the your operation or what you're learning about the apparatus, um, do not be concerned with the stabilizer emergency power unit. And if you want, you can use the level assist. Now, what the level assist does is once you have weight 
on all four of the outriggers. Then if you push the or flip or push the level assist button, then it'll automatically level the apparatus from that point. Okay, so there's nothing that says you have to use the level assist button, but it is there if you want. Also, these switches can be used, you know, really they're they're both a left right switch and then up and down. Okay, so I would in the right upper right corner. Um, if I move the outrigger out, I'm going to move the switch to the right, which is going to extend the outrigger, and then I'm going to push the switch down, and that's going to lower the, the jack or lower the outrigger to the ground. Alright, so with setting up the outriggers, you can see uh, the pictures here. Okay, so this is going to be on the, I believe, the, the street side of the apparatus. You'll see that at first the outriggers are completely extended. Okay, so they go out so far, then they stop, and then once you have them extended, and then you're going to lower or extend, you know, vertically, you're going to extend the outriggers to the ground. Once you have the outriggers to the ground, okay, you want to go back and you want to look at the, uh, the level gauge or the, the, the angle gauge, per se, for the apparatus. You'll see that's located, again, in the compartment underneath the ladder tunnel. And you want to have the little ball there, so the ball is going to be kind of right across there it's going to be in green from green goes to yellow and from yellow into red you want to have that as close as you can to the zero increment okay. also once you have all the outriggers set you'll see it'll turn green okay that's the indication that there is enough weight on the outriggers for the apparatus to go into its next operation so for this one you'll see that the lower two or the the left rear and the Right rear outriggers have enough weight on those, yet the front left and the front right do not have enough weight. So in that case, if you don't have the green lights, just go ahead and toggle down on the switch, add a little bit more pressure to them, and then once you see green, then you're good to go. So you should have all green lights on the control box before you move on. So once the control box is indicating all green lights, which means all four outriggers are firmly playing on the ground, Go back to your uh, momentary switch there um, below the ladder tunnel. Okay, you can turn that switch off, which that disconnects or, or um, turns off the power to the, the outriggers. Then make your way, if you're going to be the driver operator, making your way to the turntable, go up below the turntable, um, pull the ladder out, and then make your way up on top of the turntable. So this is a picture looking at the turntable. I'll go over a few different parts and pieces of this um, turntable that's going to be specific to the operations of truck 5-1. Main components of the pedestal. You will see at the top of the pedestal there's a bucket intercom. This bucket intercom is your communications for the people working in the bucket. If you're on the turntable you must push the button to talk. Okay, So it's a push to talk if you want to communicate with those in the bucket. Though, so understand, if you're in the bucket, okay, there is no push to talk if you're in the bucket trying to talk back to the person on the pedestal. Whatever you say, whenever you're in the bucket, the person on the pedestal is going to hear what you say. So be cautious what you say. On the left side of the pedestal, you'll see light controls. Okay, This could either be the lights at the end of the bucket, the lights underneath the bucket, or also the lights um, on the walkway. You will see to the left side, the lower left side, will be nozzle control. Okay, so that'll be the nozzle at the end of the aerial device. To the right, there's going to be the boom controls. Okay, so I'll go over each one of those a little bit. And then to the, the far right or inside the, the lid will be the information data plate for the apparatus. You'll see in the upper left corner you have an emergency stop button. You have a monitor stow, so that's the little um, switch to the kind of in the center there that has a, a cover over top of it. So if you were working with the master stream device, you could use the monitor stow, and that automatically puts it back into its stowed position. A few of the other switches you'll see here is the front basket lights, the track lights for the lights going up the, the ladder, under basket lights, the rear basket light, an air horn, and then you have an aerial speed control. Okay, so that can either be, a, I believe, a slow, a fast, or a medium setting. Okay, so if you bring the aerial out of the 
out of its cradle and you may go into the fast setting makes the, everything kind of move a little bit faster increases the, the rpms of the apparatus then once you get in closer to the building then you move may move that back to the slow position okay so this is just an overview of what you'll see on the upper side or the top of the turntable the screen to your right that's indicate that's a screen that's really going to just show you what's going on with the apparatus you see there's a menu button there a silence button if there's some sort of alarm goes off uh, if you want to check through and look at any of the alarms that are going on you see an alarm button and then you can also page from different pages a few of the important things on here is going to be a load chart okay that gives you an idea of how much weight you have with or not really how much weight you have um, it, it goes by the length of the boom and give you an idea of how much weight you can have in the bucket um, to the upper right corner, you'll see um, indicator for rung alignment. So if you're going to, you know, place the aerial in position and then climb the, the ladder, this is a way you'd make sure that all the ladders are aligned for climbing. Upper left corner shows you gallons per minute if you're flowing water, and to the lower left corner gives you an indication of how much oxygen or how much breathing air. Okay, let's not use oxygen. But I say how much breathing air is within the the large cylinder um, on the boom. Okay, so this is the lower controls for the pedestal. Okay, off to the left side you'll see again those are the monitor controls. So if you're flowing water you can move the monitor up, down, left, right. Um, you can lower or raise. The other three levers you see here okay, are what's actually going to be used to control or operate the boom of the aerial. The far left um, lever is going to be extend and retract. The one in the middle is going to be for right and left and the one for the, the far right is going to be lower and raise. You will see the one on the left. If you push it or extend or push it away from you, okay, you're going to extend the boom. If you pull it back towards you, you're going to retract the boom, the one in the center. If you push that one away from you, you're going to move the boom to the right if you pull it back towards you, you're going to move the boom to the left, the one on the right side. If you push that lever away from you, you're going to lower the boom. If you pull it back towards you, you're going to raise the boom. Okay. About the controls for the aerial device at the pedal stool, I want to move on and talk about the controls for the device or the aerial uh, up in the bucket. So you'll see on the, this picture here, is this going to be the controls off to the left side? Across the top of the, the control box, you'll see the emergency stop button in the upper left corner. Across the top, there's going to be the lighting control. So again, this mimics what's on the pedestal. You have the um, front lights, the under bucket lights, also the rear lights. And then you also, again, like you would have on the pedestal, the aerial speed control. So this could be either slow, fast, or really it just sits in the middle. So if you're working on the aerial device, you, you're kind of out in you know, open space, and then go ahead and click it up to the, the fast speed. And then as you get closer to the building, you want to slow things down, then move it over to the slow side. In the lower left corner of this, you see nozzle controls. So for this aerial device, everything is electronic. These are going to be the same switches or same operations that you have on a pedestal. So you can either lower or raise the nozzle. You can swing it to the left or to the right. And then you can change from a straight stream to a fog pattern. Currently, you can you'll be able to see that you know for most operations we leave the the straight stack tips on the aerial device, and then the the combination nozzle is stowed within the bucket. That's something you can change out if you need to. Then you see to the right corner you have an air horn button, so that could be used if you need to get somebody's attention. Uh, maybe something's going on, you want to slow somebody down, or or really just as I say get their attention excuse me go ahead and use the air horn alright so the center controls again this is going to mimic the pedestal you have the option to extend or retract move the, the bucket or the boom left or right and then you can raise and lower the bucket now you will see that for the bucket operation of the bucket controls there's a little tab up there at the top that you can disconnect or remove this control box and then at some point when you're up in the aerial device, you'll see that there's a receiving bracket on either of the doors. So you can move this either to the left or to the right of the bucket or keep it in the center. That's dependent on 
um, which side of the bucket you're working on or where you want the controls at. The next screen you have um, is going to show you or it's going to mimic what you would see down at the turntable. Again, everything is the same on this one. Um, you have the menu button, the silence button, you can look at any alarms going on, and you have the, the page button where you can page between um, your different pages on this. You'll see a picture of the truck there, so right now it's showing that the, the bedded length or the, the aerial device is at 29 feet, and it also gives you a height to the top of the bucket from the ground. All right, so this is just one of those little extra pieces of information that you might use during your operations. Truck 5.2. So with Truck 5.2, um, this device or this piece of equipment is a 2009 Pierce. Um, the one thing with Truck 5.2 is the aero device, the boom of it's actually been you know, repurposed from a, I believe a 1975 um, MAV aero scope that was owned by the company. So in 2009 that boom was taken off the chassis and then placed onto an aero scope are placed onto a Pierce chassis. So you can see with this uh, apparatus, so we're at 23 feet retracted, so it's about two feet shorter than truck 5.1. Okay, the outrigger spread, so we're at five feet seven inches um, for the bat wing, and then we are at 19 feet six inches for the overall width if with both outriggers are down. So a little bit of difference between this apparatus and truck 5.1. So truck 5.1 only uses four outriggers, okay, all four of them um, go out and down. For truck 5.2, this one uses six outriggers. The two bat wings are in the center of the apparatus. Okay, so you can kind of refer to why we call that the bat wings. And then the outriggers in the front and the rear, they go, they're jacks that go straight down. So with the capacities of truck 5.2, they're a little bit different than uh, truck 5.1. The capacity of truck 5.2 is a thousand pounds, both with or without water. That's a little bit different. Um, if you remember back to truck 5.1, that apparatus is a thousand pounds in the bucket. Um, whenever you start flowing water, it reduces to 500. Truck 5.2, that's going to be a thousand pounds all the time. The flow on this one is going to be 1,500 gallons a minute as a max flow. It's a little bit less than what you had on truck 5.1. So the aerial setup for truck 5.2 okay, is a little bit different than truck 5.1. For the setup of truck 5.2, it's a little bit different than truck 5.1. So what you'll see here in the upper right corner is a picture of the air brake system or the parking brake for for truck 5.2 you have a maxi brake the yellow one to the right you pull that one out that sets the brakes on the apparatus and then the black button you push in on the black button that'll lock up just the front wheels okay once you set the brakes for the apparatus which is generally going to be done by the driver operator and then you have two switches so these are rocker switches. You have the aerial master and the aerial PTO, which is the same as truck 5.1. The first switch you want to activate will be the aerial master switch, which is electronic, and then the aerial PTO, which is the PTO or the hydraulics for the system. So here's a picture of the operator's compartment for truck 5.2. This apparatus is going to operate differently than truck 5.1. So you remember on truck 5.1, that apparatus has a control box located at the back of the apparatus and everything is electronic. On truck 5.2 we are using um, hydraulic or electric um, for these operations. So you'll see a few switch gates. For the indicators for truck 5.2 you have the level gauge okay, which is going to level the or indicate the level of the apparatus from front to back. You have emergency power unit okay, so there's a light for that. You have an emergency um, power switch a high auto switch and then across the bottom you have stabilizer lights that indicate once the stabilizers have been deployed. The difference between truck 5.1 and truck 5.2. Truck 5.1 when the lights turn green that's indication there is enough weight on those outriggers to go on to the next operation. For truck 5.2 these lights only show that the stabilizer is out of or moved from its normal position. Okay, so it doesn't indicate that the outrigger is actually on the ground. It just indicates that it's been moved from its stowed position. And then down to the right corner here, you see a level gauge. So this one is located um, beside the compartment, and that's going to be your indicator for the side-to-side -side levelness 
of the apparatus. So for the controls for truck 5-2, you'll see that each one of the six outriggers has its own lever. We're starting from the left side, we have the front street side jack, then we move into the rear street side jack, and then the street side outrigger of the bat wing. The fourth position will be the curbside outrigger. Move to the rear curbside jack and the front curbside jack. So the fronts are on the outside, the bat wings are in the middle, and then the rear stabilizers are somewhat between those. At the bottom you'll see a button for the aerial override and the stabilizer override. Okay, For the, the overrides that's something that the driver operator will deal with and that's just the override the safeties within the system. You also see a Chez cheater bar. Okay, that's just um, you know the the guy that came up with the idea. And what that what the cheater bar does is it fits over top of all six levers, so you can push all six down at the same time. And that's really how you want to set up truck five two. Put the lever on there and push all down, all six at the same time, and the truck will level itself out. Now you can go back and readjust slightly. Um, depending on the position of the aerial apparatus. So even though this slide says the street side, this is the curbside setup for truck 5-2. As you can see the bat wings, okay, they're going to generally be about six feet away from the apparatus. Um, the stabilizers are going to go down as I said before. The front and the rear are going to be vertical stabilizers. I think this goes straight down um, to the ground. To start out you want to set the route rigger plates on the ground, so the first two of the front are going to be located in the front bumper. The rear stabilizer plates are going to be located just behind the rear wheels of truck 5-2. First thing you want to do um, is activate the high idle switch, and that's just going to increase the idle for the apparatus. Prior to deploying the bat wings, the driver operator is going to wait for a signal from the roof firefighter or the curbside firefighter. They're waiting for them to signal that the ground is clear that the outrigger pads are placed in the proper position and it's really an all clear to go ahead and start setting the truck up. Okay. As I said before, all the stabilizers, all six, will be lowered at the same time. Once the stabilizers are on the ground, the driver operator is going to look at the level indicator and verify that the apparatus is level. Now you see in the picture here for both these level gauges, both left to right and front to back, you want to have that small ball there. Um, in the green. So zero is the best. As long as it stays within the green, then you should be okay for normal operations. Once the outriggers have been firmly planted on the ground, then the driver operator is going to go back to the high idle switch and position the switch or reduce the idle of the apparatus. Once the apparatus idle has been reduced, then the pinning of the apparatus will start. You'll see that the indication has a picture of where the outrigger should be pinned at. So the pin should be placed in the lowest hole, okay, or the one furthest from the tower. But you want to slide it into the hole that it easily goes into. You don't want to find one of the holes where it's very tight putting it in. You don't want it that tight in position. Again, with the lower picture, you'll see there's a the, the jack pin um, has been installed. But again, you want to place that in a position that's not tight up against the actual jack housing. Um, you want to have some space. For the pinning operations of truck 5-2, the driver operator is going to start at the number one position. This is also where the, the driver operator's compartment is at. They're going to pin the bat wing or the center stabilizer. Move to the back of the apparatus. They're going to pin the rear driver's side. From the rear driver's side, they're going to move to the front of the apparatus and pin the driver's side front corner. And from that position, they go back to the center and climb up. The curbside setup is much the same as the driver's side. So again, you want to double check and make sure there's no hazards underneath the apparatus. And then you're going to place each of the three pads or plates. Once the plates are down, you want to signal to the driver operator that they're OK to start setting up the truck or lowering the, the jacks and the outriggers. Thumbs down means to lower, thumbs up means to raise, or indication of raising and lowering, and this operation will be shown to you um, whenever you actually do the, the hands-on part of the skill. Once the outriggers are in place, then you want to pin the um, street or the curbside, sorry, the curbside, 
the same as you would have pinned the driver's side. So pinning the curb side of the apparatus is much the same as pinning the driver's side. Okay. So one of the things I want you to, to look at is if you know if I'm looking at that top picture there, you see the position of the pin. And in the center here, you will see this long plate with the wire connected to it. That long plate with the wire connected to it is the indicator that the pin is in place. Okay, so that makes a, a connection with electronic connection, um, which turns off the alarm. So make sure that if you put the pin in from the wrong side, or if make sure you're putting the pin in from the correct side. So if it goes in from the wrong side, that alarm will keep going off. Okay, it won't stop. For the for the vertical jacks, again, if you look at the uh, the jack pin, you will see that either of these jack pins, whether it's in the front of the apparatus or the rear of the apparatus, there is a space between those. Okay, so that jack pin is not going to be forced into place. Okay, you just want it as close as you can get it, but it's going to easily slide into place. All right, so the pinning operations for the street side of the apparatus, you're going to pin the center, you're going to move and pin the front of the apparatus, then from the front of the apparatus, you're going to move to the rear of the apparatus, you're going to pin that, and then the roof firefighter from the rear of the apparatus is going to make their way up into the bucket. Okay, so that's why the, the operation is a little bit different than the driver operator. The driver operator on the other side is going to pin the center, pin the back, pin the front, and then make their way onto the turntable. The roof firefighter pins the middle, pins the front, pins the back, and then climbs up into the bucket. So what you're looking at here is the pedestal on truck 5-2. The upper portion of the pedestal okay, is going to have more switches to it, and then the lower portion of the pedestal is going to have the levers or the controls for the boom. A few of the other things you'll see on here, so we have a waterway gauge. Okay, This waterway flow gauge is going to indicate how much water you're flowing, and then you have a bucket intercom. Again, this is much like the one on truck 5-1. You need to actually manipulate the talk switch if you want to talk to the people in the bucket. Those in the bucket do not have to manipulate a switch to talk to the person on the turntable. So as I said before on truck 5-1, if you're up in the bucket, watch what you say, because the driver operator at the pedestal is going to hear what you're saying. You'll also see there's a connection for supplied air and for the fire comp. For the upper portion of the pedestal, across the top, you'll see panel lights, front bucket lights, under bucket lights. To the right side will be a hydraulic system pressure gauge. To the left side, lower left corner, will be an aerial to bed alignment light. So that's an indicator that the, the aerial is aligned for stowing. And there's an indicator plate for the bucket capacity at 1,000 pounds. The lower controls. So these levers are used to operate the, the boom. So the lever to the left is going to be for extend and retract. The lever in the center will be for left and right operations. And the lever to the right will be for lowering raising. There are a few switches on this panel also. The upper right corner is going to be the bucket power switch. This is going to be used to transfer electric power or controls to the operators in the bucket. If this switch has not been manipulated to the on position, then the people in the bucket or the firefighters in the bucket have no control. You have a high yellow switch and then the lower right corner is the emergency stop. If for any reason anything happens you push in on that red button and that will stop the operations of the aerial device. 5-2. Once the stabilizers are in place then the controls automatically switch to the turntable. The bucket controls need to be engaged with that basket power switch that I just previously talked about. For truck 5-2 aerial operations, if you're going to be operating the, the aerial from the bucket, what you'll see in front of you is the, the handle okay, or the, the levers that's going to be able to move left to right up and down and then also extend. You'll get all three of these motions out of the same lever okay, compared to um, truck 5-1 that has three different levers. If you're, if you look at this um, handle, you'll see there's a red toggle switch. That toggle switch must be depressed to have operations or at the bucket. For the bucket of truck 5-2, you know, so just remember there is a dead man switch which is operated with your trigger finger um, on this 
control lever or control handle that you see in the picture. So as a review also, um, with this lever if you push out or if you if you push it forward or pull it back towards you, um, it's going to be extend and retract. If you lift it up or push it down, it's going to be raised and lower. And if you move it left or right, it's going to be moving the boom either to the left or to the right. The other three switches you see across the bottom are going to be the front bucket lights, the bucket underside lights, and then the high elbow switch. Okay, so if you're working um, out away from the building or really in kind of free space, then go ahead and use the high idle. And then once you get into a closer area, then turn the high idle off and it'll slow your movements. So once the bucket um, has been stowed back in its position, back in its cradle, and the crew is out of the bucket and back on the ground, then the outriggers can be lifted uh, by the, both the driver operator and by the, the curbside or the, the roof firefighter. Both the curbside and the street side pins will need to be removed. Once the pins have been removed, then the curbside firefighters are going to signal to the driver operator that the pins have been removed and it's okay to start lifting the outriggers. As the driver operator, before you lift the outriggers, you want to engage the high idle. And then all six of the outriggers are going to be raised at the same time. You can either use two hands and hold on to all six, or you can use the cheater bar to capture all six of the levers and move them at the same time. Once the aggers are close to being stowed by the operator, as the operator you want to slow down your operations and then do each of the six outriggers one at a time to slowly place them in their stowed position. So once the uh, all six outriggers are in position or in their stowed position, then go back and um, verify that each one are in the upper in the stowed position, so do each one of these one at a time. Once the outriggers are in the stowed position, then disengage the high idle. Um, then go up into the cab and disengage both the PTO and the Aero Master switch. Quint 5 is a 2010 Pierce 75 foot Quint. So with the Quint apparatus, we have both a 75 foot straight stick and it has pumping capabilities uh, much the same as an engine. So for Quint 5, you'll notice that the boom is a bit longer than the other two apparatus, the Truck 5.1 and Truck 5.2. So this um, boom is 30 foot 6 inches um, when it's at its retracted length and the outrigger sp spread is 17 feet 3 inches which even the outrigger spread is much the same as the other two trucks. Okay, just understand that this one we have a straight stick and that straight stick is 30 feet 6 inches in its better position. Um, some other uh, differences with Quint 5 compared to the other two trucks. So it has a 750 pound um, tip load um, without water and if you have water in the waterway or flowing water then the, the tip capacity is reduced to 500 pounds. The aerial setup for Quint 5 is much the same as Truck 5.1 and Truck 5.2. So you'll see um, here is pictured the controls up in the cab. So to start out, you'll find the, the switch between the, the driver and the passenger seat, actuate the aerial master, and the aerial PTO switch. Um, the other thing that's going to need to be uh, switched on will be the front brakes. And you'll see that as a switch um, on the lower right corner of the switch panel. The switch panel for the aerial master and the aerial PTO is above the driver operator. Um, you know, up above where the um, sun visor is at, so it gives you an idea where where that's located. At the rear of Quint Five, you'll see the stabilizer controls are located both on the left and the right side of the apparatus. So compared to Truck Five One that had everything in a, in a movable box, you held on to Quint Five has, as I said, the controls on either side. So you open the door up. And you'll see the indicator lights. So the indicators, so you're going to um, activate the stabilizer, and then you're just going to move the so the switch on the lower left corner is going to be um, extend and retract. 
and the switch to the, the right will be lower in rays. So reviewing the switches, so the upper left corner is the high idle switch. You'll see that this is going to be mimicked the same on either side of the apparatus, whether you're on the driver's side of the apparatus or you're over on the passenger side. So the upper left corner is the high idle switch. You have emergency hydraulic power switch. You have the outrigger indicator lights, the jack indicator lights. You have the outrigger extend and retract, and you have a switch for the, the jacks raise and lower. The stabilizer is set up for Quint 5. You want to extend the outriggers to a full extension. You want to place the outrigger pad um, in the landing area for the jack, and then lower the jack to take the weight off the suspension. This operation will be completed for both sides of the apparatus, and as the driver operator or as the aerial operator, it does not, I mean, there is no right or wrong of which side you do first. Once the stabilizers are down, then you want to lift the apparatus and check um, both side to side and front to back, and there's a, a level indicator gauge um, located on the, the rear of the apparatus. For Quint 5, you want to, uh, again, so you just want to take the weight off of the rear tires. You want to take the bulge out of the tires, um, but the apparatus does not actually have to be off the ground. Moving up to the turntable for Quint 5. Okay, so for the, the pedestal on the, on the turntable, you'll see that you have both gauges and gauges and switches, and at the lower portion, you're going to have the levers. This apparatus does have an intercom, which is the same as the intercom. It's going to be on truck 5.1 and the intercom on truck 5.2. Upper portion of the pedestal on Quint 5, okay, starting at the upper left corner, you have the remote aerial control. So this switch needs to be in the on position to be able to use the controls at the tip of the aerial. To the right of that, we have the lights at the tip of the aerial. Below that is the high idle switch. We have a stabilizer warning light. So for some reason, um, we lose contact or lose pressure on one of the two stabilizers, and that light will activate. You have a rung alight alignment light. So if you're gonna be climbing the aerial, um, this is an indication that all the rungs are aligned. An indicator test switch, only places power, excuse me, power to each of the lights. Um, and it's just a test to make sure that the bulbs are not burnt out. And then you also have a emergency hydraulic switch, which is something that will only be operated by a qualified driver operator. Two of the other things you're going to find on the pedestal will be a waterway flow meter and a hydraulic pressure gauge. To the lower portion of the pedestal, on the left side you have the nozzle control switches. The first one there in the upper left corner will be to deploy or stow the master stream device. You have a control switch for, you can switch between either fog or a street stream. You have a switch that moves the stream left and right and you have a switch that lowers the um, water stream, lowers or raises it. With the three levers, they are much the same as the other two trucks. Okay, so the lever on the left side is the um, extended retract. The lever in the center will be um, left and right, and the lever to the right will be lower and raise. Once the ladder has been lowered and placed in the bedded position, then the stabilizers can be stowed for Quint 5. Moving to the back of the apparatus. To stow the stabilizers, you're going to um, activate the high switch. The first thing you want to do is raise the um, jacks, okay, or put them in the vertical position, and then once the jacks are raised and the weight is taken off the apparatus and the tires are back on the ground, and then you're going to just retract both of those outriggers um, and retract them into the body. Once the outriggers have been stowed, then the jack plates will be picked up and placed back on the apparatus. Um, one thing with the jack plates on Quint 5, uh, stowed or stored in the rear compartment on both the driver and the passenger side of the apparatus. They are not stored um, in any trays underneath the apparatus. Once the outriggers have been stowed, go back to the um, cab. Uh, up inside the cab, you want to disengage the aerial master and the aerial PTO switch.
placed in two positions. In fire mode, the aerial master stream is attached to the fly section. In rescue mode, the aerial master stream is attached to the mid section. Following this slide, you will see a video on the operation with switching the aerial master stream between the bed section or the bid section and the fly section or placing it in fire mode. For normal operation in the Alpha Fire Company, the aerial master stream on Quint 5 is always positioned in the rescue mode.